GLC presents a Studio B production brought to you by the donations of our faithful partners. Hello, I'm so glad you came back. I hope you heard the first lesson. I hope that as you listen to these, you begin to realize God loves women. And God is doing something with women today. If you've ever read in Joel 2.28, there was a prophecy about the times that we're living in now. In it, God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh, men and women alike. Your men and your women will prophesy. People will dream dreams. They'll have visions. And we're living in that time. Have you ever thought about the fact that God picked this time for you to be born? Not 1,500 years ago, not 700 years ago. He picked this time. You're not an accident. And there is something for you to do in this time, the last days before Jesus comes back. We have a lot to do. We need to know what we're doing. The other day, I heard of a man say, a pastor say, that when he went to churches, he used to ask, how many of you know your call in life? How many of you know what you're supposed to be doing? And he said, easily, half the congregation wouldn't raise their hand. And he said, I finally just quit asking because it was embarrassing. Then he said, can you imagine a general in an army having an army where half the people didn't know what they were doing or what they were supposed to be doing? Well, think about it. We're in God's army. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know why you're here. There's a reason. There's a reason why you were born in this time. There's also a reason you were born in the place you're in. A lot of you watching this show live in other countries. Well, hello from America. God has a plan for you right where you are. Some of you live in countries that your government is oppressive. And you think, I have dreams. I, have, I feel like I have a call from God to preach or I feel I have a call from God to write a book or to teach or something and yet my government would not let me do it. I'd like for you to know that I spent eight years in a former Soviet Union country. Going, I went 11 times. And I started going right after communism fell. And yet I saw what God did. He was ready to move and no government could stop him. The women were released. They were released like they'd never been released into working in orphanages, working in jails, working with people on the street, working in hospitals, teaching, singing, preaching. It was just amazing how God began to pour out his spirit and release women in a country that was very oppressive toward women. Actually, it was very oppressive toward everybody. But you can't stop God. There's only one thing that can stop God in your life. It isn't the devil. It isn't man. It's you. You're the only thing. If you say, no, not going to do it, that stops it right there. So look back in your life. If things aren't happening and you wonder, well, what's going on with my life? Was there a time you said no to God? Did you? If you did, look, back up, say, I'm sorry. I was going down the wrong road, Lord. I repent. Tell me what you want me to do, and I will do it. And give me the ability to do it. And then listen and take the next step. And then the next step. What is it? You have a destiny. You have something that when you die and you go to heaven and stand before the Lord, he can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Not just a good one, a faithful one. Oh, faithfulness is so important to God. He prizes it almost more than anything. Because I've seen a lot of people in my life, and I bet you have too, they had talent. They could do anything, but they never did anything. They just never did anything. Nothing happened. Why? They didn't do the little stuff you have to do to make it happen. Sometimes people are big dreamers, and boy, I am a big dreamer. But I'll tell you, you have to put feet and hard work and persistence 
to it or you'll never reach your destiny. Sure, you're going to have discouragements. I mean, look, how many times have I just gone, oh, oh, God, I don't know if I can do it or not. And God says, yes, you can, get up. There's a time God will pat you and call you and say, I love you, I love you, and you can do it. It's okay. And there's times he just says, get up. And I'm saying that to some of you today. Get up. Get busy. You've wasted enough time. You've used too many excuses. Think about the excuses people use today for why they don't reach their destiny. Oh, a lot of them say, I don't have enough money. Another one I hear a lot is, I don't have education. I don't have any education. Some people say to me, I barely got out of grade school. Well, God doesn't care about that. Maybe something happened to you to keep you from not being able to go to school. Maybe your family needed you to work. Maybe your family moved around so much you didn't have a chance to really do something schooling in your schooling. It's okay. God is the one who equips you. And I've discovered that God likes to take you and take something you don't think you'd be very good at and then you just lean on him and pray and depend on him. And the next thing you know, you're great at it. There's a lot of things that I, I do in my life that I've had to work very, very, very hard to learn how to do. Computers, one. I live on the computer, but I'm telling you, I didn't even know where you turned it on. And I worked and I worked, and now I use it in my ministry. I mean, it goes all over the world to people, just through a website. So you can learn to do things that you don't think you can do right now. I have a stepmother. My mother died when I was 28, and I have a stepmother who is 92 years old. When she was 80 in this retirement home, she was the first person to get a computer in the whole building, and she was one of the oldest ones, and she learned how to use a computer. Never, ever let age those of you that are watching, you say, oh, I'm old. Mm -mm. God still ha If you're still kicking and breathing, he's still got something for you to do. It doesn't have to be big. It can be something little. It doesn't matter. God doesn't judge things by, oh, you're more important if it's big. Oh, you're not as important if it's little. He doesn't judge it like that. He judges it like, I need this job done. Would you do it? And if you do it, it's wonderful, and he's pleased. So never think, well, I'm too old, I'm too this, I'm too that. I know another lady who helps me in my ministry. She is 82 years old and legally blind. And she began to say, Lord, I'm bored. I don't want to die and just sit around and wait till I die. Give me a job, God. And God put this thought in her head that was wonderful. She got into these ceramic classes, and she was trying to make all these little things and she didn't like it, but she began to notice the leftovers of the ceramic things, and she began to fashion those and make Holy Spirit doves because she began to realize, she's a Methodist, she began to realize people don't realize that the Holy Spirit is who he is, and I'm going to make doves and give them. So I'm getting ready to go to Africa. I take teams of people to Africa and around the world, actually, and we train leaders and speak to people civic leaders, church people. She's making 300 doves and little necklaces for us to give away. Now, wouldn't you say that her job was a very important job? Because somebody that doesn't get gifts, doesn't ever have much money, nothing, no ability to buy things, they're going to get a gift from God that's been prayed over, 82 years old. So keep going. It's not over till it's over, and you don't want to be a person that wastes the last five years of your life. God has a destiny for you. If every person has a destiny, how do you find it? That's what most people say. Well, do I? What do I do? Do I just sit around and wait for God to tell me? Do I, uh, do I talk to somebody? Do I read a book? What do I do? And I want to kind of help you with that today. The first, if you are a mother, the main thing you're called to do is be a good wife and a good mother. Think about this. If you don't give your children your best, who is? Who's going to love them like you love them? Nobody. 
Who's going to pour into their lives like you will? No one. So some women say, I'm so frustrated. I have four kids. I have five kids. I, I'm pregnant again. I didn't want to get pregnant. Here I am pregnant. And God says, you're doing a wonderful thing. If you think about the woman named Jochebed in the Bible, in Exodus, and in Genesis, Jochebed was the mother of three people who went into the ministry and had gigantic ministries. And she was living part of that time under an oppressive regime where people were being killed constantly. And God's will was still done for her children. And she helped it. She was the reason. Who were her children? Well, one was named Aaron. One was named Miriam. And the baby was named Moses. And look what happened to him. She helped her children reach their destiny by doing what a good mother would do, a godly mother would do. Everybody has some kind of a destiny. Your main destiny is to know God and to make him known to others. God wants you to do things for him. He's going to tell you stuff to do all along the way. But he really wants you spending time with him. I mean, think about it. This, God's real. He's got feelings. He can get his feelings hurt. He loves. He cares. He wants to spend time with you. And so, first and foremost, your destiny is to know God. And then your destiny after that is to make him known. So God will give you things to do. Let's think about some of the people that have had a destiny that turned out really big. I mean, think about Billy Graham. Look what he's done. But think about the man whose destiny was to lead Billy Graham to the Lord. I heard my pastor say recently, the reason you don't get your rewards on earth when you die is because your rewards keep coming in after you die. You touch people who touch people who touch people who touch people. And so you don't get your rewards until Judgment Day because they don't stop coming in until then. Think about that man. I think his name was Mordecai Ham or something like that. Billy Graham said, all I remember is that man had that finger pointing and it was crooked and I thought he was pointing to me and I gave my heart to Jesus. And Mordecai Ham is responsible for millions of people coming in because of what Billy Graham did. So you never know who you're going to touch with your destiny. Never minimize your call. To go into all the world and make disciples, does that mean you need to be going on mission trips all the time? No. No. You can pray and people can go on trips and tell people about Jesus. You can give money. I mean, this station needs your donations. It's going around the world getting bigger and bigger. And the more you give to this station, you are fulfilling the Great Commission. You're doing it. One of the things the Lord taught me, because I, I do go to other countries, the Lord taught me in the very beginning of it, Betty, you may have Betty Swan Ministries, and you may be doing that, but Betty, you can't go if those people don't pray and till up that soil before you go. And I learned the hard way they're right. I went, the first trip I went to Belarus, former Russia, former Soviet Union, I didn't know to get a bunch of people praying. I got over there, it was so hard. And it, it was difficult and it felt difficult. I thought, I am getting a group of people praying for me. And I probably have maybe 50 or 70 people that if I can send them an email and say, this is what I need prayer for, and they jump right into it and write me back, I'm praying this, and the Lord showed me this, and be encouraged, and think about this. They're going around the world. It's just my feet that are going, but their prayers are going. And I can tell you to go into a hard place that's been prayed over, it may be hard, but you see a lot of fruit. How about the people who give? There are people who are called to be givers in this world. And they give. My husband's one. They just give and give and give. But all of us are called to give. I love to give. Do you love to give? If you don't, you're missing out. 
You know, you wonder why you're so broke. Well, you don't ever give any money away. You don't give stuff to help people. If you don't have any money, go give something. When we need money, we think, who do we need to give money to? Because give, and it'll be given back to you. But back to these people that are involved in the Great Commission, praying, giving, and going. All three have a destiny, all of them. You have a destiny that is based on your giftings and your talents. So it's very important that you take stock of yourself. Find out, what are you good at? What are your talents? You'd be really surprised. I knew a lady one time that said, I don't have any talents, I don't seem to. You know what her talent was? She could write you little cards, and whatever she put on that card, when you opened it up, you knew God was talking to you. That was part of her destiny. That was a gift, and it didn't look very big. Think about people who can do nails. Well, maybe you need to have pretty nails. How do you like my nails? I got them done. Somebody had to have that gift. How do you know what your gifts are? Well, you know, if, you know some of them. Another good thing you can do is go to your family, especially your children if they're teenagers, and your good friends, your best friend. Say to her, what am I good at? And write it down. Don't just listen and believe them. They may say, you are the best listener. They may say, when you go in a place, it just gets peaceful. You bring peace everywhere you go. Somebody else might say, you know what you're good at? You can make everybody laugh. You can, you're fun. You're fun to be with. God uses everything. Never think you have to be like a preacher like this for God to use you. No. No. He's going to use you out in the world. He's going to, in fact, if he can put you out in the world and you won't be tempted by the world, he'll put you, you need to be out in the world. That's where all the lost people are. And so, you need to learn how to move and be in God's will. Now, what else? Well, just realize some things you're good at don't come easy. Remember, learning the computer did not come easy for me. I'll tell you another one. I want to be able to speak five languages fluently. I'm, I write down goals every year. I put that down every year. I can't do it yet. But I can speak a little bit of Russian, pretty much Spanish, a little bit of Swahili. I'm just slowly never giving up on that. But just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not part of my destiny or one of my talents. Just because it's hard for you, keep at it. Don't let discouragement stop you. What does it take to stop you? Well, I'll tell you what. You need to have the attitude, I will until. That's what you have, not what does it take to stop you? Well, discouragement stops me. Lack of money stops me. People being critical of me stops me. It might hurt you. It might slow you down. But you need to say, nothing stops me, Lord, but you. When you tell me to stop, I stop. Other than that, I go till I die. You will have a general destiny and a specific destiny. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I know what I'm good at. I'm a teacher. I love people. I love to have fun. I love to laugh. I love to have a good time, and I love to travel. And that's my general destiny. All along, for years, I've said, I want to live all over the world with the people and know what they're really like. But what's my specific destiny? As I've gone along in life, I've taken tests, I've read books, I've listened, I've listened to sermons, I've listened to people help me, and I've had prophetic words, I've had many of those, many, and I have them all written down, I keep them on my computer, so I can encourage myself. This morning I was listening to a tape of a, of a prophetic word given to me and driving over here in my car, because I thought, I need to listen to that, and just remember, this is what God's called me to do, to be on TV like this. He told me probably five years ago, you're going to be on TV and it's going to go all over the world. So all of you in those other countries, hello from God, because he told me I was going to be doing it. Now, what's my specific call? I'm called to teach practical Christianity. I, a lot of people teach history. They teach uh, different tenets of the Bible but I'm called to teach practical Christianity. I want to teach you how to live in it every day, 
and have it be real and have Jesus be real to you. Have miracles and have it be real, not goofy, but real. All right? I'm also called to raise up leaders. So one of the things that I really enjoy doing is meeting someone and being able to see something in them that they can't see in themselves yet and hanging in there with them until they take hold and take off. It's possible to be that way. You don't have to start out just this gangbuster way. You don't have to have my personality. You can be very, very quiet. Very, a person who stays in the background, well, God has a need for that too. There's a need for all of us. Have you ever read in uh, Romans 12, Dear brothers, Romans 12, 1, Dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to Christ. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him. When you think of what he's done, is it too much to ask? Don't copy other people. Don't copy the world. But be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then you'll learn from your own experience how his ways satisfy you. So just as there are many parts to our bodies, so it is with Christ's body. We are all parts of it. And it takes every one of us to make it complete. For we each have different work to do. Never compare yourself to somebody else. Never do that. You'll always compare their best quality to your worst quality. So that's, you're going to come up short. Don't do that. Identify your own talents. Identify your dreams. Don't quit dreaming. What are your dreams? But know that obstacles will come to stop you. Why does God allow obstacles? Why? Well, it's like going to the gym. You get that gym. You do, ugh, ugh. And maybe you're only trying to lift 10 pounds. Maybe only 10 pounds. Maybe 25 pounds. When I go to the gym and it's 25 pounds, it's like, ugh. Ugh. And somebody else is over there doing 250 or what, like this. Obstacles come to increase you, to strengthen you. They don't come to wipe you out. Now, maybe the devil sends them to wipe you out, but God says, be strong, push, go bone, go past, go. And so you do, and you get strong. So uh, obstacles are going to come. It's going to involve taking risks. You've got to be willing to get out of the boat and walk on the water. And it bless, God blesses preparedness. Don't just sit around. If you need to know how to do something, get busy and learn. You never know when God might want to use it somewhere. Everything I've ever done, I seem to be putting it all together now, using it in my life. And some of the stuff I've done, like being a model for 10 years and a makeup artist, um, people say to me, Betty, that's worldly. Why are you going out there in the world? And I thought, well, I want to do it, and I like it, and God will use me out there. And he did. Ask God to give you a Bible verse to hold on to, a rhema word from God, not a logos word, a rhema word. That's when you read the Bible and you go, oh, that is God talking to me. Mine is Jeremiah 1.5. Before you were born, I called you to be my spokesman to the world. I've known that for years. So get a Bible verse. But never be afraid of failure. I've had failures. I have really messed up. You know, some of them, I just think, stuck my foot in my mouth again. Or why did I say that? Or why did I do that? Failure is just part of life. You're not going to be perfect. There is only one perfect person, and it's not you. It's Jesus. So make your mistakes and learn from them. Say, Lord, how can I do it better next time? Another thing is be sure you have the character and the morals to back up your call. We've all seen people in ministry that did not have the character and the morals to back it up. And God can strengthen you and correct you. Let him do it. It's only to help you make you better. And don't get held back by your past. Everybody has stuff they've done. You're not any different from anybody else. Everybody has stuff. There's, maybe there's some that don't, but... Most people I know do. And you look in the Bible. I mean, my goodness. You know, Paul was chasing Christians, putting them in jail. And God said, I've called you. I've got a call, and you're going to the Gentiles. So God can get you past anything like that. Don't get distracted. 
There will always be things that will distract you. It will be designed to get you off course. And don't let that happen to you. If you're distracted and you know you were called to do something, just get with God. Say, Lord, help me to get back on track. Maybe you've had a divorce and you think, well, I can barely feed myself and these kids. But the Lord will help you. He will help you. Another thing is there is a difference in the, between the time you get the call and the time you actually get sent out. I have waited so long to be doing this. A long time. When I was 48, when I was 40, the Lord let me know my real ministry wouldn't start till my mid-50s. And that happened. That's exactly what happened. I got so frustrated. I saw all these people in their 20s going around the world, and I couldn't even get there in my 40s. And it, but it did start in my 50s. It started when God was ready. He had a lot of preparation to do in my life. Sometimes when it's going to be a big ministry, you've got to lay a really good foundation, one that will hold through the storms. You've got to watch being offended by people. Offenses are going to come to you. It's going to happen. You're going to offend people. You just have to live with it. You have to be able to sit down, talk it over with people, and work it out and keep going. If God's called you, don't let that stop you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to have this frustration. God has a destiny for you. Have an idea that I believe the Lord's given me and I want to share it with you because I want you to become a part of it you and your children and all your friends it's called pennies from heaven there are so many pennies lying on the ground people throw them away they step over them they have them in drawers they have them in the bottom of their car just pick them up and put them in a, in any Wells Fargo bank pennies from heaven Amarillo Texas 100% of the money that comes in we will use to feed starving people here in America, in Africa, around the world. The mission statement the Lord's given me is feeding the world with what America throws away. So save your pennies and send them in. Send them either by mail to me or any Wells Fargo bank. We will help change the world together. This program was produced by and for God's Learning Channel. If you enjoy this program, we need your support to keep this program on GLC. Please make your checks out to God's Learning Channel, P.O. Box 61000, Midland, Texas 79711-1000. Please be sure to designate where your contribution is intended. It is very important to let GLC know which programs you enjoy and support. getting a lot of response.